Greetings, and welcome to Stellaris. <clears throat> so first, I would like to uh, apologize if uh, my speech has any issues during this video. Um, I had a uh, dental appointment earlier today, and half of my face is still numb. So I may uh, slur my words a little more than usual and have more issues with pronunciation than I normally do. I would normally wait until this wore off, but I just noticed an issue with the video I uploaded yesterday, and I wanted to uh, uh, talk about it before uh, I forgot uh, what I wanted to say, basically, <laughs> while it was fresh on my mind. Um, yesterday, after my Sifu video, I uploaded a Stellaris video, and it was supposed to be a little over an hour long. To introduce Stellaris to my channel to see if anybody was interested in watching me do playthroughs of Stellaris and uh, the video that made it was about 30 minutes long and it lost the intro and the outro it was supposed to be about a little bit about me talking about the game um, and then me doing it five years of a playthrough with United Nations of Earth and ending with me seeing if anybody telling people if if they're interested leave a like or subscribe or comment down below um if you're if you'd rather me continue to do other vi games instead you can also comment about that because i value your feedback um i've been trying to get back to my regular upload schedule uh there should be a phasmophobia and don't starve and um what did they change it to? Ghost Exorcism Inc. Uh, I'll try to get a Project Zomboid out this week as well. Uh, and a Monstrum. Uh, the Zomboid, I may not get to this week. I may have to wait till next week to upload one, but I'm going to try. But every time I say I, I'm about to get back on schedule, something goes wrong. I'm, I'm trying. Just bear with me. But uh, back to the game at hand. Stellaris. Okay, so, so uh, I'm uploading this video to correct the issue with the previous video. Uh, I could not find the original video to fix whatever got ch uh, ripped out of it. And I'm not sure if it happened with the upload or with um, something I did while I was trying to process the video and trim it down if I hit some key and didn't realize it and lost a chunk of the video. Uh, but I can't find the original video, so if I do upload a Stellaris playthrough, I will be starting completely over. Uh, this video, I'm basically just going to be talking about the game. Um, so Stellaris is a 4X strategy game. And like most every 4X strategy game there is out there, at least every one that I have played, it can be boiled down to a tech race to an arbitrary victory condition. Uh, in the case of Stellaris, there is a in-game year you can set, and it will tally score and declare a victor. I believe if uh, you wipe out everybody else, it might also declare victory, but I'm not positive on that because I have actually started the game with no AI empires, just me exploring an empty galaxy so I could see all the anomalies and things like that and watch my, civiliz uh, my figure out the mechanics of the game. So you don't actually have to have opponents to play a game in Stellaris. Uh, and it also does support multiplayer, but uh, I tend not to be too big on multiplayer because I could care less about the competition, about the victory conditions. Um, when I play a 4X strategy game, I don't actually play it as a 4X strategy game. I'm using it as an empire simulator. Uh, that's the way I play Stellaris. I just want to see my empire grow and to see if I can manage the empire well. Uh, depending on the uh, empire I play, I may not be interested in galactic domination. I may be just interested in seeing the story unfold and making the galaxy a better place. Um, I like when the AI can keep pace with me. Um, I don't want to be uh, basically herding hamsters like it is a lot of times for me in Civilization where I have teched up to uh, where I have jets and tanks and the AI is still struggling in the medieval ages. That, that becomes unfun to me. 
Um, Stellaris can have some of those issues, but there are ways to compensate for it. There are a lot of ways to help bring your allies up. But I really love the detail in this game. It has amazing graphics, uh, 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 absolutely wonderful music. I, I have the uh, soundtrack on my phone, and I listen to it through the radio at work a lot. Uh, I absolutely love the music they have done in this game. Um, and I also love the theme and how much detail they put into the stories in this game. Uh, I love it so much that I have one game I have saved here. Um, this United Nations of Earth playthrough I did. Uh, I basically was playing the game up to a certain point and then I stopped and I used the way that the game had developed as the world setting for a sit-down RPG with some local friends. Um, so they're basically colonists in uh, one of the worlds I just colonized at the point in the playthrough. And it has already, uh, the, the way the game has developed has given me alien species. It has given me a galactic map. It has given me different events that have unfolded that can, ha and the politics and everything that has just helped shape the world setting for my sit-down RPG. But I really love the detail they've done on Stellar Stellaris. It's one of my favorite games. And mm -hmm. I've recently gotten back into it because the Overlord DLC just recently came out. And they fixed uh, Vassalization. They did a lot of work on it. It used to just be a delayed way to integrate another empire into your uh, empire. But now there are benefits to keeping vassals. There are benefits to being a vassal. So it has added more dynamic to the game for you to be able to basically get all of the galaxy under your control without it actually all being your empire. You could vassalize people. You could join, uh, be the vassal of somebody who is really powerful and shares your ethics. But they have a lot of default um, empires in the game. So what I was going to do was do a playthrough as the United Nations of Earth because my preferred play style really fits with the United Nations of Earth. Now I won't be doing a tutorial on how to play the game and most of the tips I give may not be quite that useful uh, for somebody who's interested in the competitive multiplayer or winning the game basically. Um, uh, I don't do a lot of metagaming type tips. I, I might mention a few uh, during the course of the game, but uh, most of the tips I do, I will be explaining how different mechanics interact, and a lot of the choices I make will be theme-based more than uh, the actual benefits uh, being min-maxing, basically. Because uh, I will make some choices that, that actually wouldn't be the best for my empire, but they fit in with the theme. But yeah, they have multiple um, default empires, and I'd like to do playthroughs of all of them if y'all are interested. Uh, just uh, if you would like to see Stellaris playthroughs on my channel, just uh, leave a like or comment down below. Uh, if you would like to see... If you would prefer I spent my time uploading different game series, just leave a comment about that as well, because I do value your feedback. Um, but if I do start a playthrough, I will probably start with United Nations of Earth. If you'd like to see my style of gameplay, or at least a, a small portion of it, uh, I have already uploaded a video that has a, a little bit of it yesterday. Uh, so I'll leave a link to that in the description here. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in seeing me do a playthrough, uh, I will be explaining a little bit that was cut out of the other video. Um, I don't recommend United Nations of Earth for a first-time Stellaris player because it is a democracy. Now, there are a lot of relations and mechanics in this game that you really have to understand to run a democracy very well in Stellaris because you do need to keep your populace happy to get the best benefits from running the empire. If your populace becomes unhappy, you will have severe problems being a democracy. 
democracy also takes several things out of your control. Uh, you don't really have any control on who runs for president. You have very little control in who actually ends up getting elected. Um, if uh, And so I don't recommend a democracy for a first-time player. I recommend sticking with either a dictatorship or an imperial um, government. That way you have more control or even playing one of the machi uh, machine or hive mind empires. Uh, the only issue with that is since they don't benefit from happiness, they can be a little bit more difficult to play, especially when you're starting out. So yeah, Commonwealth of Man is a pretty good one to play starting out. Uh, being a xenophobe, there won't be much you had to worry about diplomacy wise. You can basically be an aggressive military empire and conquer the galaxy. Um, but yeah, I don't recommend United Nations of Earth for a first time player. I will go into detail if I do a playthrough uh, over what I mean about the democracies and the difficulty and the things you have to learn how to manage. Um, other than that, my only complaint with their default empires is too many of them use prosperous unification as an origin. I mean you have the United Nations of Earth as prosperous unification. Next on the list we do have another origin, Lost Colony. And then we go back to prosperous unification for most of these empires down through here until we get to the Xanarid uh, suzeran suzeranity. Um, it is a syncretic evolution, so there's a third origin type. The lock and mechanist are mechanists, there's a fourth origin type. We go back to prosperous unification for a handful more till we get to the uh, Pashardi absorbers, who are a fifth type, the necrophage, and the Satharelian bliss, which is an uh, uh, ocean paradise origin, so there's your sixth type. And then the last few all go back to prosperous unification. So out of all of these default empires, and they can show up in your games, the majority of them are prosperous unification. Where if we go in here and look at the variety of origins, they have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27 different origin types as of now. And they only showcase 6 with all their default empires. And that was a little bit disappointing to me. I was kind of hoping there would have been a default empire of every origin type. And as they introduce more, they'd add more default empires. So if I do playthroughs of other empires, starting with like the Vord technocracy, uh, I will probably be changing their origins uh, so that I can showcase the variety of origins they have in the game. I think Vord technocracy, I would probably make subterranean, one of the new ones. Um, Kill It Cooperative, I would probably make uh, either On the Shoulders of Giants or uh, Gateway to the Stars. But um, I do really like the, uh, the uh, random empires in the game. You can see a lot of the origins through the random empires. I just wish their default empires had showcased more. Uh, but that's a minor complaint. Uh, another minor complaint I had was when I added the humanoid species pack. And as you can see, I own all the DLC. That's just a testament to how much I love the game. And every DLC has added enough for me to think it's worth the purchase. Uh, but when I added the humanoid pack, it changed Earth's city look and uh, the uh, ship look to the humanoids. Yeah, it switched their, their city appearance to humanoid. And I actually prefer the uh, mammalian cities for humans. That looks more like something you'd see on Earth than this. I mean, these look a little uh, too high tech in my opinion, but I do really like that old style. As for the ship appearance, I don't mind the humanoid ship appearance for United Nations of Earth. It has kind of a Star Trek feel, but when it comes to Commonwealth of Man, I much prefer the old mammalian ships. That looks like something more from a uh, Terran Empire. You know, it has more of an old blocky uh, Earth sci-fi look. 
and I, I much prefer those. So a lot of times, what you can do is like if I go in here to Commonwealth Man and edit them, I can change their city appearance to mammalian and change their ship appearance to mammalian, save them, and it creates a new empire. But right over here, I could click this to make it empire spawning forced. And that means they, this Commonwealth of Man will always be in the game, so it will not use its default Commonwealth of Man. So that means uh, whenever I play the United Nations of Earth, I will be facing these guys who have the appearance I would like. And you, can, you don't have to save an empire to customize it. I can go in here and just change the city appearance, for example, and then just hit Done, and it'll launch me into the game with the changes I made without it saving them permanently. Uh, another thing that got cut out was me explaining the way I like to play. Now, those of you who have seen me play other games always know I go for the largest map size. There's no difference here. I always go for huge. Now, there have been, I've seen complaints about late game lag, but I never really experienced it. I don't exactly have a top of the line machine. Uh, my machine is several years old. It might have been top of the line when I bought it, but I have never really experienced in game lag. Uh, I do experience occasional few seconds of lag, like when I go to the species tab. If there's a lot of species, it may take as long as 10 seconds to actually update the list, but the game is still playing if I'm unpaused. It's not a lockup. It's just taking a while to update that particular screen so that I can interact with it. But uh, I do like a random amount of empires and I have it set so that the mid-level, which is about 15, the max is 30, is the average. Um, I play with pretty much all the bells and whistles. Marauders, Fallen Empires, Advanced AI, um, I do up the amount of habitable worlds for two reasons. One, I like a lot of planets um, because I want to create a lot of colonies. Um, so I want worlds to be habitable even if they're not my native um, environment. I can always terraform to them or get species that can colonize them. Um, I greatly increased the primitive civilizations because I have found on a huge map with the default settings, <clears throat> well, heck, I have had a few playthroughs even with the five times settings where I don't see any primitive civilizations. There's none close to me. Uh, I've expanded uh, several sectors and never had one primitive civilization in my empire. So I like a lot of life in this galaxy. Uh, also, by default, mid-game start year, which is a mid-game crisis trigger, is 2300, giving you 100 years before it starts. They have the in-game start year for the major crises to be uh, 2400, and then they have the victory year to be 2500. Well, as you can see, I shut off victory year, and I give myself an extra 100 years between each crisis. Because I don't want to feel the urge to have to rush through text just to be ready to deal with a crisis. Especially because the AI really has issues with the crises on the default level. Um, there have been games where the mid-game crisis has wiped out every damn AI in the game. And it's been basically up to me to save the galaxy. Um, and it's real difficult to uh, fight against a, a crisis when the AI isn't even slowing them down. Uh, because the crises are designed to uh, be a threat for the entire galaxy, not just one empire. Uh, I play on Commodore difficulty level, <clears throat> which is, well, the default one is Ensign. So this is about midway between Ensign and Grand Admiral, so that the AI gets some bonuses to its economy, research, and naval capacity. Because playing on Ensign, 50 years into the game, all the other empires will be pathetic compared to me. I can't declare them as rivals. They're never really going to be a challenge to me. Uh, I can't really get any benefits from research agreements with them. And I have to give them their bonuses right off the bat. <clears throat> the way scaling difficulty works is they will have their full bonuses by end game, start year, and start with none. 
So that doesn't give them enough of an edge early on to keep pace with me. They have to have their bonuses at the start of the game. Um, I cut down on hyperlane density to create more choke points. And I cut down on abandoned gateways and wormhole pairs so that this huge galaxy feels huge. So there's not a lot of easy travel from one end of the galaxy to another. <clears throat> uh, I disabled guaranteed habitable worlds. There are several origin types. Um, Ocean Paradise, Necrophage, uh, Hegemon, um, I forgot the name of the one that allows you to start in a federation. I cannot remember the name of that origin off the top of my head. And Doomsday, that's five off the top of my head that disable your guaranteed habitable worlds or replace them with something else. And I've already upped the amount of habitable worlds in the game. So uh, I think it's a little unfair since Prosperous Unification is the most common start that they also get, and it's also a very powerful start, that they also get an advantage of guaranteed habitable worlds over a lot of these more difficult uh, starts. Uh, origins. So I disable them because chances are you're going to have habitable worlds close to you even without them being guaranteed because I have increased the amount of habitable worlds. And I also forgot to mention the second reason that I up habitable worlds. It has to do with the quest series in the game. They have a quest series that starts uh, within like the first five to ten years called um, the Habitable World Survey. Well, if you're in a fairly crowded galaxy, you may not find enough habitable worlds to complete that, much less enough habitable worlds to trigger the follow-up quest, which requires you to uh, survey nine different planet types. Because you cannot scan planets in another empire's territory for credit for those quests after you have made contact with that empire. Before you finish the first contact mission, you can race through their territory and scan any habitable worlds for the credits. But as soon as you've made contact and you now know this is that empire's territory, you cannot survey anything in their territory. And uh, that was the second reason I increased guaranteed habitable worlds, because I like those quest series. And it always annoys me to have a partially completed quest in my situation log be that can never be completed because... I can't scan any more planets. Um, they did a change to the way that population grew as a fix for the end game lag because they figured the end game lag was triggered by high population counts because of the way that they the calculations run with the individual populations. Um, what they did is basically make it to where uh, growth scales the more population you have and the logistical growth ceiling counteracts that for biological pops. So the more um, population you have on a planet and the more room they have to grow, the higher their bonus to growth to kind of compensate for the fact that it takes a lot of growth to get a new pop. Well, I didn't like that mechanic, mainly when you mix a biological empire and robots. Um, it, when you unlock a certain tech, you can start building robots in your empire. Well, if you've already got uh, the default before they did the change is 100 points of growth per pop. So if you're going, doesn't matter if you're going from zero, I mean from one to two, or from 30 to 31, it just took 100 points of growth. Well, when you build a robot assembly plant as a biological pop, it provides two growth per month with very little to modify that. So that means it takes about a little over four years, about 50 months, to churn out a robot pop. Well, when they change the growth to be scaled, you usually already have about 30 population, maybe more in your empire. And it doesn't matter whether you're growing a, bio, uh, a biological pop or building a robotic pop, the amount of points you need for the next pop is the same. So that means by the time you research the tech, build the robot assembly plant, and start churning it out, it could take 500 or more points to grow that next pop. 
So you could be looking at about a decade before you turn out your first robot. And that just really made the mixing of biological and mechanical pops kind of pointless to me. So I go back to the old style by reducing the logistical growth to one and eliminating the required scaling. So now in my playthroughs, every population takes 100 points. That means my population grows a little bit faster than their default game, but I have never experienced any lag because of that apart from like the species tab. But I mean the game itself still flows at the pace I play without really locking up uh, unless it's doing an autosave. And then it'll only hesitate for three to four seconds at most. Uh, the other thing is I will be playing on Iron Man mode. Uh, I, I haven't really chased achievements in this game, mainly because I used to play with mods that corrected some issues I had with the game. Uh, one of them fixes the democracy uh, issues, and I'll probably mention it if I start a playthrough. Um, but Iron Man mode, like most Iron Man modes, disables your ability to save scum. Basically, you can't save the game, play forward if you don't like the outcome, reload a previous save. You have one save, that's it. Uh, and it will auto-save when you leave the game and at certain points in case you crash. But there's no safe scumming unless you take a save, tab out of the game, back up the save, and then reload it. Uh, or or uh, recopy it over when you want to save scum. There are ways to get around in Iron Man mode. But I won't be doing that. Uh, I will be uh, basically playing it and seeing how many achievements I could knock out. But that's basically uh, my introduction that uh, got cut out was me talking a little bit about this and s uh, about the first six months got cut out as well which was me going into detail about the democracy and some of the mechanics and a little bit about my play style. Uh, mm -hmm. I will cover that when if I'm playing the United Nations of Earth I'm not very aggressive. Um, I basically am a very peaceful and diplomatic empire. I want to grow, I want the, to make the um, galaxy a better place, and I want it filled with other democratic empires. I can get aggressive against uh, slavers and uh, tyrants. So I, I don't mind a little bit of combat and conflict, and, and against certain ones like the fanatic purifiers and the uh, driven assimilators and some of the uh, like the ravenous hives there is no diplomacy you have to fight but for the most part I want the galaxy filled with like-minded people who are controlling their own independent empires or possibly vassals of mine if they decide to be uh, work with me but federations are my main goal I like to be federated with the United Nations of Earth and that would be how I'd play the United Nations of Earth. Commonwealth of Man, my play style would be significantly different. They're xenophobes. They don't want, they don't like aliens. They're also a dictatorship and very militaristic. So I would be out there to conquer and enslave. And most likely, you know, conquer the entire galaxy. If it isn't subjugated to me, it's going to be part of my empire one way or another. But that's one of the great things about this game is you can vary your play style. There's such variety. And if you would like to see playthroughs, uh, as I said, you can look down in the description for a link to the video from yesterday that will show a sample of my playthrough. If you'd like to see playthroughs, let me know in the comments down below uh, or leave a like on the video and I will upload a playthrough. Uh, I was mainly introducing this because I'm, I'm getting near the end of my seafood playthrough, so my Sundays will be available again. Um, if, if you would prefer I didn't bother taking my, spending my time on Stellaris and stayed with the games I already have uploaded and maybe go back to some of the ones I used to have, uh, leave a comment about that too because like I said, I value your feedback. If I just want to play games, I'll just play games. The whole point of me recording videos and uploading them is to see if you guys are interested in some of the tips I may give or are entertained by my playthrough. But thank you all for watching, and hopefully we'll see you in the future.